scientists are closely watching an active high threat supervolcano in California. And this is it. You can see the areas of dying trees there where they are pointing to the gray scalded areas, the bald areas of forest because of the heat source coming from underneath. This is the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. We've recently seen an uptick in quake swarms there after the Ridgecrest earthquakes. That's normal. This happens every time we have a bigger earthquake. In Ridgecrest, we had one there this past July, 7.1, but we also had 7.1 20 years ago in 1999. Long Valley Caldera had quake swarms then because of the fact that it's lying on the fault system, the same fault system that the Ridgecrest earthquake was on, the uh, Walker Lane fault system. And uh, Ridgecrest, as we know, is in a volcanic field, the Casa volcanic field. And north of that is the supervolcano of Long Valley Caldera. Uh, Yellowstone has a lot of uh, attention as a supervolcano. Yellowstone also had an uptick of uh, earthquakes because of the Ridgecrest earthquakes. Again, this is what happened 20 years ago. The last time they had a 7.1 earthquake in Ridgecrest in 1999, Yellowstone also was jolted into having quake swarms, but that's normal. And uh, Yellowstone might have been getting all the headlines, but there's another supervolcano slowly brewing, and it could one day lead to an eruption. The Long Valley Caldera, considered a supervolcano by USGS volcanologists, Although scientists were unsure until recently just how much magma was lying beneath it, recent studies show that there's a reservoir beneath it that's more than 240 cubic miles of magma. That's more than a quarter of uh, which has the right composition and temperature to be liquid. Although there aren't any signs of impending eruption right now, it's worth noting that there's been an uptick in activity over the last four decades and especially after the Ridgecrest earthquake, that whole area has been jolted. The caldera is formed after an eruption brings magma to the surface, and when magma fills the chamber below a volcano, this causes the crust to expand and the volcano grows. Following the eruption, the vo that volume is displaced, which makes the ground above sink down, depressing, showing like a bowl, shaped like a bowl that's similar to a crater. And that's why it's called a caldera. This particular caldera is situated near Nevada, the border south of Mono Lake. Scientists note that the Long Valley caldera has been growing since 1978, most likely because of the uh, growth of magma into the chamber below it. In other words, the tank is filling up, getting ready for the next eruption. While there aren't any signs that an eruption could occur soon, and the proportion of liquid magma inside could actually decrease the supervolcano sits dormant. The possible scale of interruption there is enough to keep scientists watching it closely. We also have a um, geothermal plant there in Long Valley Caldera. Uh, the Yellowstone does not have a geothermal plant, whereas Ridgecrest has a geothermal plant, Long Valley Caldera has a geothermal plant, and also the geysers have the biggest geothermal plant in the world. Uh, they do want to uh, uh, decrease the heat under Yellowstone by perhaps drilling and pushing in water and using the water as a geothermal activity, energy, but uh, the U.S. Geological Survey believes that that's not f properly, it's not feasible because it can actually uh, bring about a, an eruption if they happen to um, drill in the wrong place, as you can imagine. Now, that's why in this case, the scientists are watching Long Valley closely. Should all that liquid blast, uh, Long Valley could be just as cataclysmic as the Yellowstone supervolcano eruption of, two, of, of 640,000 years ago that created the, Volcara, the uh, caldera in the Yellowstone, which sits at the site measuring 35 by 50 miles. 
Long Valley has hot springs just like Yellowstone does and a geothermal system, not to mention many small volcanic activity including quakes and eruptions of gas, magma and rocks. Its last magma eruption, known as the Bishop Tuff eruption, took place 760,000 years ago and saw 150 cubic miles of magma spewed into the air in what is the third biggest super eruption in recent geological times, 760,000 years ago. It's about 100,000 years before the uh, super volcanic eruption of Yellowstone 640,000 years ago. Now, the blast, which created the current caldera, 20 miles by 10 miles, was 2,000 times greater than the Mount St. Helens eruption of 1980. The glowing hot ash covered East Central California. Some was airborne ash falling as far afield as Nebraska, while the surface of the Earth sank more than a mile into the ground. What's in its reservoir now is enough to create an eruption that's that matches that one. The U.S. currently has three active supervolcanoes. The Valdez Caldera in New Mexico is the oldest of the three and has had its big event 1.25 million years ago. And at that time it blasted 70 cubic miles of magma in an eruption that created a caldera measuring 12 miles by 14 miles. All three hotspots are under constant monitoring because any events that take place has the potential for huge consequences, as we know. Air traffic around much of the world would come to a stop, vast areas of land would be covered with ash, and we don't know what would happen, how poorly the planet's plants and uh, um, fauna and flora would fare, and how much that would impact human life. Also, the gas that's emitted could be composed of potentially toxic chemicals. It would also set off global climate chill that could last for decades, what we call as a volcanic winter, uh, that, ex uh, that experts believe would be the worst thing that has ever happened to humanity. Now, while volcanic gas emissions and earthquake swarms could predict and pre precede the an earthquake uh, at these sites, an eruption at these sites, there's still elements of unpredictability involved with these volcanic eruptions. The unrest symptoms can go on for decades or centuries without any eruption or any uh, problems. In other words, it can be difficult to nail down just when a supervolcanic eruption might uh, occur. This is from uh, Nexus Feed. From source is Science News, Isabella Z, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. Now, it's not just 760,000 years ago that we had an eruption in Long Valley. We also had one about 111,000 to 57,000 years ago, which had give us a formation of Mammoth Mountain. This is according to Volcano Discovery. The large 17 by 32 kilometer Long Valley caldera is east of the central Sierra Nevada Range, California, the result of a giant explosive eruption happening 760,000 years ago, formed the widespread voluminous Bishop Tuff. The caldera has been showing unrest in recent years in the form of deformation of the caldera floor and earthquake swarms. It contains numerous hot springs and fumaroles. In order to better study and monitor the caldera and possible future changes, USGS established the Long Valley Observatory. Following the Bishop Tuff eruption and the formation of Long Valley Caldera 760,000 years ago, activity continued in the central part of the caldera to form the Lava Dome. Smaller explosive eruptions of rhyodacite pumice occurred as well from outer ring fracture vents, and the last activity was about 50,000 years ago. In its early history, the caldera contained a large lake where the new lava dome formed an island. Beach deposits can be seen on the caldera walls today. Later, the lake drained through the Owens River Gorge. The younger Inyo craters overlapped the caldera on the northwest, but are chemically and tectonically distinct from the Long Valley magmatic system.
long-term trends, seismic trend, earthquake activity at Long Valley Caldera has remained low since the mid-1999, averages 5 to 10 earthquakes per day, with magnitudes less than 2, and occasionally events magnitude 3. Deformation trend, there's a renewed uplift of the resurgent dome that began in early 2002, ending early 2003 largely offset by two centimeters of subsidence and accumulation from early 1999 through the end of 2001. The resurgent dome has since shown minor fluctuations in uplift and subsidence, but remains roughly 80 centimeters higher than in the late 1970s. There's uh, the carbon dioxide CO2 trend, the diffuse carbon dioxide gas flux in the Horseshoe Lake tree kill area has shown little change from the relatively high levels of 50 to 150 tons every single day sustained for the past several years. This is according to the Long Valley Observatory recent status report. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.